Retro Rob plays everything. Hey there gamers, Retro Rob here. Recently I did a video on the C64 Mini where I mentioned that you can add your own games to that game system if you would like. And I had a few people ask me, hey, how exactly do I do that? So I'm going to post a guide right now. This is not going to have all the fancy like special effects that I generally do in my videos because you know they're so good. <laughs> <laughs> it's just going to be a down dirty video. Uh, I'm not really counting this as part of my regular video cycle. This is just kind of a quick how to on how to do it because it's pretty easy. First thing you're going to need here is a little USB flash card, flash, flash, whatever. This one's a keychain. But you're going to need, you know, a little little memory thing right here to plug into your C64. I don't know if high capacity ones work. Generally when I'm doing this kind of work, I keep it really low. This is only like a two or four gig one. So this is definitely nothing special. And what you're gonna wanna do absolutely first is you're going to wanna make sure that your firmware even needs upgrading. So the first thing is we're gonna go over to, there we go, we're gonna go to www.retrogames.biz slash support slash upgrades. Actually, skip that www. It's just retrogames.biz slash support slash upgrade. You can see it. Oh, you can't see it right at the top of the screen, but it is there. Don't worry. I'm going to have a link to it down below. And here we have upgrade your firmware. And you can see right here, the firmware version is 1.20. And the big deal is that you need to power up your C64 Mini and you're going to need to check the firmware version. And how you do that is on your Commodore 64 Mini, you're gonna press down so you can get to this menu here, right there, and you're gonna go over to the wrench. And that is two moves over. I'm gonna press my fire button, go to system information, and right there on the build, you'll see the build. So mine's quite old. I'm using 1.0.10. And since it's a newer firmware, what you're going to do is download the firmware by clicking on it. All right, now that I've downloaded that binary file from the retrogames.biz website, I am going to need to put it onto a little USB drive. And that, of course, is the one I mentioned earlier. I'm gonna plug it in right now and Computers often will act a little bit differently depending on the computer itself, but I'm going to go into File Explorer because that's almost always going to be down here at the bottom of the screen. And then I am going to find the drive that I just plugged in. Mine's called C64. And something to note here is this has to be formatted as FAT32. And that is according to the manufacturer, so I'm going to follow that. I've got a regular FAT on here, so I'm going to go with FAT32. And this can be a big problem because if it actually does not rec recognize other formats, uh, it's not going to work for you. So I'm going to just do that and make sure it is. In most cases, you're going to find that it already was formatted this way. And this should only take, eh, it should take a few seconds. There we go, format complete. I'm going to close that, reopen the browser. This will be in my downloads. Yeah, I got a bunch of junk in here. And I am going to copy, I said copy, this bin file over to the C64 side. All right, next thing you need to do is take the thumb drive that you put your update image on and put it into the C64, preferably the correct way up. Then turn on your C64 Mini. All right, there we go. It's now powering up. And we gotta wait for it to show up on the screen. And there we go, that's loud as heck. Sorry about that. Let's turn the sound off. There we go. And then, Hold on the joystick. Get over to that wrench. C64 
system information. And now, as you can see, it sees a new firmware update. And what we will do is move it over to apply and press the fire button. Here we go, update is applying. Almost there. No signal, that means it's rebooting. The light is on right now, and there we go. And if we look, what we should see, oops, it's so loud. What we should see is that we are now running the latest firmware. And there we go. 1.2.0. Other thing you're going to notice is back on the main screen, you now have an option to read from that USB drive. We gotta put some images on there though. Now we're gonna add some ROMs to the USB thumb drive. I'm gonna note a couple things. Oh, you couldn't see it, there it is. Uh, number one, there is a limit of 256 files per directory. So you're gonna have to split up your ROMs that way. You can have subdirectories, so you could make a folder and put like all the A's that you have or all the B's. I prefer to curate my lists a little bit more so that I just don't have so much junk to scroll through. Uh, I generally recommend that, but you can do it however you want. I've only got a few games I'm gonna put in here just for the sake of demonstration. And I'm gonna copy. And then I'm just basically going to paste them on to my C64 drive. Theoretically, I could have done this all at once. There's no reason really why I couldn't have. I find that there's less chance of having a problem when I'm flashing a device if I only have the update file on there. However, I've done it with things like uh, Android and I haven't had a problem but still, this is the safest way to do it. So I'm showing you the safest way to do it. All right, now I'm gonna take my USB drive and plug it into the C64 Mini again. And in a second, I should get a USB. There we go. And I'll just scroll over to it. Go. Oops. Give it a second there. And there are my games. I'm going to try out Super Mario Brothers 64 because I haven't actually played that yet. We'll see how that goes. Dang, it works. That is just crazy. This game was available for a pretty limited time because uh, it's kind of a pirate game. I'm not going to be able to play it well because I'm playing it off the monitor, uh, the, the screen monitor, not off of my actual screen, but kind of cool, isn't it? I'm like way behind, so there's no way I, I'm going to know when to jump. But anyway, as you can see, it actually does work. Not every game works. Also, you have to be careful of what uh, what USB port you're plugged into. So I'd recommend probably getting yourself a uh, USB uh, hub and maybe plugging into there. You know what, I haven't tested that. Why don't we test that real quick and make sure that works before I tell you to do that. Retro Rob plays everything. All right. So what I've done here is I have I don't know if you can see it. Let's see. Let's see. Can I can I do that? Yeah. Okay. Into port one, I have plugged a hub and I have plugged the USB thumb drive and the controller into it. 
and yeah, it appears to work just fine, and I'm able to play games. Uh, the important part of this is if you had something that required you to have the joystick plugged into uh, port 2, you could do that this way uh, because the second USB port would still be free. Kind of important, really. There we go. A little bit of Mario C64. Oh, geez, I gotta jump by pressing up. That's pretty old school, kids. Oh, yeah, I'm gonna need it if I get the fire. Yeah, I'll need my... I will need the fire button. Pretty cool, right? Hmm. All right, well, I believe we have succeeded in what we set out to do here. We have upgraded the C64 so that we can run new games on it. We've installed a couple new games onto a thumb drive and we have tested out playing it. There we go. As I said earlier, not every game will work with this because this is technically an emulation device. Uh, also, disk squi squishing, <laughs> disk switching is a little bit tricky on here, and there's a couple ways to go. Uh, you can make some like subdirectories. I have not tried that method yet, uh, but there's also groups that have turned the D64 images basically into a giant cartridge image so you don't have to swap discs in multi-disc games and that appears to be a really good workaround for this. Also there is a group that's made some images that are specific to the C64 Mini to help it with some of the problems that you might see in emulation uh, and I have not been able to find those yet because it looks like they took down the initial website but I'm sure they're out there if you search for them hard enough and uh, if I ever do find them I will put a link down below to them. All right, that is it. I want to thank you very much for watching this video. If you found it helpful, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe for more, and I'll see you in a couple days. Bye!